candy girl in all my world. You look so sweet, a special treat. All right, guys, so I'm a little late, but there's this big buzz craze all over the social media talking about this new edition story. So I just watched the first episode, so I just wanted to review it, go through some things, because it was pretty good. I have to say that. So now we get into the intro. starts off, they're already new edition. Or uh, actually, it seems like they're kind of splitting off with Bobby Brown and Belle Bebe DeVoe. You know, there's this big old incident to where they're about to start fighting on the damn stage because I guess Bobby didn't took like two hours of time and they like, yo, we need to get on stage and we need to perform. They kick Bobby out. All right, y'all. How y'all like Bobby Brown? Hey, all right. And then if <laughs> somebody Brown get off, he like, no, nah, F that. I'm about to spray y'all niggas with some water holes. Didn't work. So now they have to start to fight, and then this like flashback, boom! Now all the way back to the beginning. I like when movies do that, you know, because they give me like something good, like oh snap, and they're like, all right, this is how we got here. So I appreciate that. So they kind of start off with little little Bobby. He's uh, so it looks like Bobby been doing it the longest. I didn't know that they started because of Bobby Brown. So Bobby's doing a challenge show. He freezes up, and you know they laugh him off. But the cold thing is, or what? Not cold, but the funny thing is when they pan over, they he's about to sing and they freeze the frame and they say Bobby Brown, king of R&B. I'm like, bro, can y'all stop saying this? He's not the king of R&B. He had one good album. He was in a group before that. But other than that, which I'm going to say I did like that album. That, that first Bobby Brown album, that, that's my shit right there. I listened to the whole thing from front to the, to the end. So, but anyway... Uh, he's not the king of R&B, okay? So we can just stop that right now. I know his wife said that when she was high, but he's not the king of R&B. But okay, we're going we gonna to roll past that. So they go today when they uh, actually meet Ralph, and he's into Kung Fu. I'm like, what? Ralph is into Kung Fu? Is anyone, like, fact-checking this thing? Or is it just like a movie, and they're just throwing stuff in there to make it interesting? I'm like, Ralph was doing Kung Fu? Wow. We're going to do some fact checking here, but it's still good. Slick notices that Ralph is looking at this, this chick. And he's like, why don't you go over and talk to her, man? He's like, nah, it ain't, it ain't the right time. He, Slick was like, oh, you scared. So you go over there and talk to her. He's like, see my friend over there? Now, I thought it was going to be like a, so I thought it was going to be like a five heartbeat thing where he'd be like, yeah, you see my little brother over there? Yeah, he's a little shy, but he would like to get to know you. He was like, you see, that? You see them dudes right there? They're a little shy, but I ain't. So let me sing you a song, girl. <laughs> I was like, dang, <laughs> trying to sneak up in there and take the chick. I'm like, yo, calm down, bro. So then, of course, Rob was like, hold up, hold up. I can sing better. He, Candy girl, oh my well. Well, they didn't sing that song, but you know. He did his little thing. I was like, all right, all right they got a little vocal. So, you know what? One thing I do appreciate, the, the real vocals, it seems like they got kids that can actually sing and not just like kind of how Five Heartbeats did where they just lip sync the whole thing. They actually, it seemed like they could sing, as, as far as I can tell. So we have to check on that to see if that's really happening or not. Now for some kids, they got some balls. So they needed a manager and they went up to this guy's car, played by Wood Harris. Wood Harris. He's like, I don't, I don't play with kids, Get, go move along. You know, and when, they, when they're trying to like get his attention, all I could think about was him and not easily broken. When he's talking to his son, he's like, stop dreaming. That's what he looks like when he's looking at these kids like, stop dreaming. You ain't never going to be nothing. And I'm like, oh, poor, poor new addition. Poor new addition. Ain't going to get nowhere because ain't nobody believing you. No, <laughs> So they sing in front of his car and like, I would have just been like, man. I don't know what we're going to do now. As like a kid, like 10, 11, they like, nah, we about to candy girl on my way right in front of his car. You know, of course, it made him, you know, think twice. I'm like, all right, I help y'all a little. I help y'all out. You know what I'm saying? I help you out. I didn't know all this stuff happened in here. I didn't know a lot about their story. I thought they started out with five kids, grew up, and they were from like different places. I didn't know they was friends. I didn't know they started out with four kids. Like, I didn't know none of this. So it's actually educational, really. You know, so I, I do appreciate the show. So then they doing a thing, and you know, doing a little thing in rehearsal. Dude is like, uh, if y'all can't rehearse hot, y'all can't rehearse at all. This dude unplugged the fan. Like, bro, what did you do it? 
Like, it don't need to be hot. We could just continue with the fan on, bro. Like, nah. Y'all can't rehearse hot. Y'all can't rehearse at all. But they put a lot of work during practice. Though. They was doing push-ups. They was doing uh, the wall squats or suicides or whatever. Suicides? I don't know, the wall squats. I was like, dang, they do all that? I guess so. You know, you got to get your cardio up. You got to make sure you can do them dance moves. I don't know why I keep doing this. I feel like that's just a dance move, like, back in the day. So, they do their first, like, real talent show. They want to go get a, a record deal. And they go do this talent show. And the first act that they show us is, like, this nerd Urkel doing all this break dance. He... I'm like, bro, what is you doing? Like, you need to get your ass down that stage. They do the show, and then they don't win, of course. Um, but I guess the crowd liked them so much that, you know, the... The, I guess the host of the show is like, yo, you we got we got two we got two winners. We got two number one spots. And they gave it to, you know, New Edition to also do a recording session. So I thought that was kinda cool. It brought I don't know I don't know how accurate this stuff is. I'm like, man, we need to check some records, man. We need to check the facts. But if all this happened, it's a very interesting story. I think everyone needs to see it. It's a big thing. This whole little biopic thing is really popping off. It's really happening. Like, we getting a lot of good biopics. You know, and I'm cool with that. That's like the new wave of movies biopic, you know. And I'm cool that they actually put it on BET. BET actually has something good to put on TV that we can watch. So I did appreciate that. So then Ronnie is in the, uh, the mirror getting ready because he's the fifth person of the group. You know, he's the one they had to ask. So he's in the mirror. He's doing all his little steps. Doing all his little steps, his little brother come in. It's like, you ain't never gonna make the group because you sorry and you can't dance. <laughs> like, dang, he was killing him. And he was like, shut up. What they're doing, how they interact with each other, the, the brothers and sisters, and even the group, how they act, how they interact with each other, is like a real interaction. I feel like this is really like going on. It's not just like some executive or some, some writer just writing this stuff in. This is how we actually interact with each other. And me and my brother would do it all the time. Like, oh, that's whack. You whack. You know, so I appreciated that. You know, one thing I didn't like about the episode, though, is I didn't like LaFell's acting. Honestly, I thought his acting was very lazy. It wasn't believable. I feel like he wasn't in character. I feel like he just, just said the lines and was like, I'm LaFell. And whatever happens, happens. Like, y'all need me. And I didn't really appreciate that because everybody is really doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel connected to the story. You know, I feel connected to these actual people. You know what I'm saying? Other than that, I, I like the episode, you know? So, I, I did. I, I see why everybody's buzzing about it. So, why that girl from Best Man, uh, Monica Calhoun, why does she look sick, though, yo? She done got so small. I'm like, girl, you need a two-piece and a biscuit. You know what I'm saying? Like, what is happening? She looks sick. I thought she was going to come out and say, like, I don't know. Because they come up from the ghetto. You know, they had a poor household. They didn't have no telephone. So so Slick, when, he, when his mom came out the room to talk to them, because I guess they was decorating the Christmas tree, and she was like, what are y'all doing? They was like, oh, we bought some stuff for the Christmas tree because I know you couldn't do it. And she, I thought she was going to be like, <coughs> y'all know y'all mama's sick now. That's why. I, mean, I thought she was going to like say something like to why, why she looks so damn sickly. I think she done got way too into this whole Hollywood thing and really need to go ahead and eat a little bit. Put a little bone on your meat. Bone on your meat. Put a little meat on your bones. <laughs> Put a little meat on your bones, cause you look out, you look you're looking real bad right now. So they finally get their sign-in bonuses as a group, and the sign-in bonus is five hundred dollars and a Betamax. I'm like, uh, no, that's not the sign-in bonus. But I get it. They was then they was happy. They was happy in the mug to get that. But I get it, you know, cause when you grow up poor, you talking about five hundred dollars. Like, oh, let me. What? What you need me to do? You need me to what? Sing a few notes? Cool, bruh. Let me get my money though. So I get it, you know, $500 is a lot of money when you grow up like that. So I get why they just signed and just ran with it, but I would have liked for the actual manager to be there 
But the cold part was, the manager, he act like he ain't never managed nobody. They talking about, oh, you manage the Dialistics and the Dale Phonics or whatever it was. And he gonna say some stuff like, I ain't never dealt with no big executives, so this is what I'm doing my best. Bro, I need you to get on, on your A-game because I'm trusting these kids to you. I like their mamas, though. Their mamas was on point, though. Those mamas, they rolled up on him smooth like, uh, where the money at? They been going back and forth to New York. And I don't see no money? What you think, we some fools? Where the money at? I'm like, dang, all they, all they needed to do was pull out the gat. I'm like, can y'all calm down? Y'all about to run up on this dude? Like, relax, relax. Mamas ain't no joke, man. You messing with their kids, yo. They get up in you. Especially especially black mamas? Shoot, you can't mess with their kids. They they gonna get you, bro. You better, uh, where the money at? Uh, what's going on? We got the number one song. I need that money. Uh... <laughs> she was like, give me my damn month. It's a damn shame. <laughs> I was like, dang, bro. <laughs> like, they running up on you. Uh, you better get up in the house like the dough, man. You don't know what they're going to do. Now, like I said, the manager was being lazy as hell. I ain't never dealt with no execs. I'm doing the best I can. I'm like, bro, you need to get on your, your A game, man. Like, what are you doing? What what did you do those last, with those last two groups that you managed? Like, how was you managing them? Maybe you don't know what a manager is, yo, because you need some help. So they voted to get this dude out. Now, that vote scene was pretty deep, though, on the real. You know, they got the mamas. They upset. And then they got his sister, which is uh, Ronnie's mom. His sister trying to, you know, back him up. And honestly, she ain't really got no legs to stand on, you know, because I don't want to hear no I'm doing my best, but I ain't never dealt with nothing like this before. Well, uh, get get to doing some homework then, bruh. I don't know what to tell you. And they vote him out, you know, but Lala, she, I, you know what? This is the best I've seen Lala act. You know, I actually want to see more of her. She did, she had a good, good little scene right there. I like that scene. So they get a new white manager and he promised him all the world and we're going to go here and there. So they go up to the, the uh, record headquarters. RCA, and he going with this idea. I want y'all to bust in there, start shucking and jiving, do y'all little candy girl, like do y'all little thing. And they like, what? I'm not about to do that. Like, I'm about to introduce myself. Like, I'm not about to just start busting in singing. This ain't no musical. This is real life, bruh. People don't do that. And so he convinces them to do it anyway. So they go through all the little office singing and people on the phone like, bro, like y'all just gonna y'all just gonna be singing on the phone with a client. And they get up to Tank and Gina's boyfriend or husband, whoever he is. Y'all know Gina from Martin. Her husband is in it. But Tank is in there. He like, oh, how y'all doing? Won't y'all go ahead and run along, go to Universal Studios. And he like, but Gary, let me talk to you for a minute. He was like, who dumbass idea was that to trolley through my whole little office singing? Oh, I just thought, oh, you thought? Don't think, Gary. I don't pay you to think. I'm like, that's right, black man. That's what I'm talking about. I like that right there. I'm in charge. I like that. So, a quick little recap. Like I said, I do like the show, it, or the movie, I guess if you can call that, because it's three parts. Um, you know, as far as like a biopic, I think they did a really good job as far as like the acting. I honestly, I wish, actually, I think they could have went into the movies. I hope that they do like a um, like a shorter version, uh, like a recap, and actually put it out as a movie. Because honestly, either I would like to see it in the movies, or I would like to want to buy it on DVD. I can't watch six hours of it, though. So, I need them to chop it down, do like a Temptations three hours, even though that's long as hell. But it's still a lot of good stuff in there. So I'm assuming they got a three hours is probably what they need. And then I can, you know, buy it. They can make some more money off it. Because I actually want those actors uh, to be uh, more noticeable. And I want them to make some money off of it. It was a really good episode. Like, these biopics is really doing, they doing their thing, you know. And they singing. And they cut off the music to where you can hear their voices. I hear a little bit of auto-tunes in there. But whatever. You know, you still got to know how to sing a little bit with auto-tune. But for the most part, I do hear their voice. And I, I'm a singer, as y'all know. Because I be singing every time I get on the camera so i appreciate little things like that you know i don't want to see no lip syncing you know i want to hear the actual voices so i appreciate that so the only other thing i didn't like about the episode or the movie or the part one or whatever you want to call it was that it ended very anticlimactic i would have liked to see a little better in en or ending to that um i'm gonna call it an episode there's just three of them so but to that part to ending to the part one i would have liked to see a little more um climatic ending you know what i'm saying like something i was like dude i got to see the next one. it was like all right cool now let's see what the next one's gonna be you know it, it, but it's not it would made it kind of like if it wasn't really like good to the whole thing that 
maybe people would have forgot about the next one. But I, apparently they didn't, because everyone is talking about it all over uh, social media. So, But for me, I would have liked a, a, a more thematic ending. So, all right, guys, that's my little review. I thought it was good. You know, the acting is good. Like, these kids, oh, oh, little shout-out to um, Khalid McLaughlin. He is also in Stranger Things. I probably should have put this in the beginning, but uh, he's in Stranger Things, which is doing very well. Um, so he's also in. So I want to give a shout-out to him, because I do like seeing He's a really good actor. I do, I do like it. I wouldn't know. Another thing I would have liked for them to do is have the kids have the whole episode or the whole first part of the movie. But I actually really did like the kids. They did a really good job with everything. So, so that's just my little thing. I would have that's just it. But that's my review, guys. I'm your boy D Anthony from Break Room Blitz. Go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and comment, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this first one. Should they have left the kids in there longer? Or should, you know, how they did it was just fine. Uh let me know, guys. Alright, I'm your boy D Anthony.